Hello and welcome to Red and April Off Grid. We are building an energy efficient, relatively low cost, and completely off grid home in the Arizona desert, and we're doing all the work ourselves. In today's video, we'll be working on our interior poured concrete walls. First up on the agenda was building the forms for the concrete pour. To do that, we bought some 3 quarter inch structural grade plywood, which is still pretty expensive. It was about $60. And then I cut that to size, and then we reinforced that with 2x4s, several 2x4s, in order to make a real good, strong structural frame. I have two 2x4s on end going lengthwise, and then several on end going across. Before we could put the forms in place, I had to do some work on a radon system. So, you know, radon is a gas that's dangerous to human health that has to be... You have to make an accommodation for it to exit the building, and it comes up through the ground. And so we want a system to capture that and then vent it outside so it doesn't build up in the house. And I had left a notch in the foundation. You can see there's just a little notch over by the wall where this pipe would run through. And so I had to do enough plumbing to get that pipe ran through so that it didn't block off that opening. Uh, so I'm not going to put in the whole radon system now, just enough to make it to where I can pour the wall. Just about ready to put on the forms, but before we do that, we wanted to oil them up just to keep the concrete from sticking to the forms and make them easier to remove. So I've actually patched up some holes or some places where the screws went through oil and oiled up the boards here, and now we're getting ready to put it in place. This particular wall is made using 2x6 studs, and so it'll be about 5.5 inches wide. And I'm actually attaching these forms to the 2x6 studs on either end. So I'll attach them separately, just screw them in to that 2x6 stud. You can see that I've also put in some rebar into the lower part of the foundation there. And I've got a level on, it's all level and attached. I actually made two of these identical, so we're just bringing in the other one now, putting it on the other side getting it level and kind of parallel with the other form, and then screwing it in. The last step with these forms was to figure out some way to provide support in the middle to keep them from bowing out. Even though the support boards, the 2x4s, are on end, which gives it a lot of strength, it's still going to be under a lot of strain. So I decided to go through the wall with some pieces of all thread in the middle in order to give it a lot of extra support. That way it'll actually be bolted together in the middle to keep from bowing out. So I just got some 3 8 all thread here. I'm cutting it to length and drilled some holes in the forms. And so I'll be putting it through the forms and attaching it. And that way the center can't bow out. These pieces of all thread, of course, will remain in the concrete wall. And I'll just cut the ends off later. And here you can see the inside of the forms with the bolt going through there. We just I just tightened these up hand tight. I didn't want to actually pull the forms together just to keep it from bulging out. Also, you can see that the form fits down over the concrete a little bit so that there's a little bit of overlap. But there was a tiny gap at the bottom that you could see the light through. So we put some boards underneath to block that up. Everything is in place and it's time to begin the pour. So we're getting everything ready and rounded up to start making concrete. We got the mixer out, all the sand and gravel and everything is, is together and we're getting mixing batches here. Here I am pouring in the first bucket into the wall. I can see it's going to take quite a few batches to fill this up. It's a pretty wide wall, like say five and a half inches wide. And this form is about two and a half foot tall. We're really excited about this concrete wall. It's going to provide thermal mass for the home. It's going to add a lot of interest to our living space and kind of be focus walls. And one of the reasons that we decided to do this also is because we already had the materials and they were basically free to us. Back when we were thinking about making an aircrete home, we ordered two pallets of cement. And we couldn't return it and we made a change of plans and so we've been trying to use it. And now it's been sitting for a good while and we're still trying to use all this cement up. So one way we could use it was to make these walls. So it's free to us. It's getting older and needs to be used. We already had the rock and we already had the sand. So this was a great way to use materials at no additional cost to us and to actually make a feature wall for our home. Almost done here. It ended up taking about nine batches to fill this wall up. Once we got it full, we leveled it out and added some rebar to it to tie it in to the next level of the pour and then left it to dry overnight. Well, it's the next day and we're ready to take these forms off and see what it looks like. We're really excited and really curious uh, to see what this looks like. We're hoping it'll take some of the pattern of the wood that we're using in these forms. It's a structural grade plywood, so it had some kind of knots and wood texture elements to it. And we're hoping that 
comes out in this concrete and so far it looks really good. You can see some of the knots there. It, it has a really neat look. We decided to go ahead and clean off the scaffolding that we have inside the house and use that as a workbench to clean off these forms with and get them ready for the next stage of the pour. So we cleaned them off, we're setting this up here, then we're going to scrape it down and re-oil it and get it ready for the next time. So we, we plan to do these walls in three sections. Since these are about two and a half inch wide forms, we'll do them in, in three sections and end up with a wall that's about seven and a half feet tall. As we oil these forms between each pour, we're hoping that the oil will not only help it release, but also help the form to last. These forms have to last through six concrete pours and will be kind of wet for six days total. And we're hoping that they'll last without too much warpage. We'll see how it goes. We had considered coating these in plastic as a way to make them last or preserve the forms, but we've done a little bit of that before and didn't like the look that the plastic gave to the concrete. And since these are decorative walls, we actually wanted the wood grain to show through. And so that's why we're just scraping and re-oiling every time in order to try to get that wood imprint on each piece. We're also alternating the orientation of these, so I've, we flipped these around and now we're using them on the opposite sides of the wall as we put these in place. We decided to go ahead and use our scaffolding to make a platform up, by the, up against the wall so that I could stand on that to pour the concrete in. I'm having to do all this by hand, so I just need something I can stand on in order to get the concrete high enough in order to pour it in. So the scaffolding worked great. We have that in place and we're getting ready to start our first mix here. I'm using a standard high strength mix here which uses a lot of the Portland cement but we have a lot of it so it might as well. So I'm using a 1-2-3 mix with a one part concrete, two parts sand, and three parts stone mix. So that's a high strength mix. We're also adding a little bit of fibers to that to give it some extra reinforcement and of course we're putting in rebar uh, in every level. We didn't capture a lot of that but there's rebar inside the form and then we're also using rebar to tie in each level and that rebar connects it to the base and to the side walls of the house to make sure it really well supported and not going to fall over in the case of an earthquake or something like that. I'm just pouring these into buckets and then carrying it inside in a bucket. Man, these buckets are really heavy. It's about three quarter full of concrete and it is way heavier than like a full bucket of rock even. It's extremely heavy. And so I just swing it up on the platform and then get up there and, and pour it in the wall. It's going to be interesting on this next level when it's even higher, but so far it's working out okay. I just focus on the concrete part and April does all the other work. So she's always working it in between each pour, hammering on the side. She tried using a sawzall there for a little while, I believe. And she looks in and just makes sure that it's settling down. We want to make sure that there aren't any air pockets on the inside or any cavities. We want to make sure it's as smooth as possible. Since we're already pouring concrete, we decided to go ahead and pour a couple pads that'll serve as the base for our future propane slash garden shed. I had to make several more batches to get this filled in, and we'll show you a little bit more about that in our next video. Well, the second pour on this wall is completely finished, just waiting for it to dry. And exciting news, we got another delivery from Lowe's, and we got some sheetrock here and some insulation. So great to have this show up. Several pallets here, very heavy stuff. It's so nice to have it delivered. They just come in and put it down exactly where we, you want it. And we got a couple different types of drywall. You can see the purple there is for the bathroom. So that's a mold resistant drywall that's required for bathrooms. And then of course we got a lot of the regular. And so we'll be ready to get started on the drywall and insulation. We'll be showing more of that in the next video, but I'm, I'm actually working on that some as I'm only pouring concrete for a few hours in the morning and then kind of finish up the day doing other tasks like drywall and, and other little things. But we'll be showing more of that in the next video. It's a new day and we're getting ready for the third and final pour on this first wall here. One thing I have to do before we get going is get a board ready to go across the top. 
Since this wall will only be poured concrete up about seven and a half feet tall, I want to add the top board to that, which will be part of the framing, so I can frame in the space above the current concrete part of the wall, get it all ready so that once we make this last pour, we can actually put it right down on the wet concrete and work it in so it'll be form a nice seal between that board and the concrete wall. So I'm just getting that all cut to size. I'm getting some holes pre-drilled in that so we can stick rebar through it and getting it all ready. The next thing was to go ahead and raise the scaffolding up a little bit. We decided to raise it up. It was probably six or eight inches. It was about all we really felt comfortable with. I still have to be able to swing the bucket up onto it. And so it's just going to be a higher swing up on and a higher lift up to get it poured in. But I think it's manageable. We've got it raised up. We're taking the forms off and getting ready to prep those boards. We're liking the look of the wall so far. Right now I'm actually just drilling some holes in the wall to accommodate some rebar, putting in rebar on each level. But we pulled it off, it's looking great, and we're just prepping the forms now, oiling them up, and getting ready. As you, as you can see, April's leaving a section on the bottom of that, clear of the oil. There's going to be a pretty good overlap on this last one. We didn't need the full width of the form for this last one, so it'll be overlapping about 6 or 8 inches at the bottom. So she left that part unoiled. And also, the bolt from the last layer was sticking out a little bit too far, so I'll have to cut that off in order to lower this form down and get the right height on the wall that we needed. These forms are actually just slightly over two and a half feet. There's a few inches extra width there to accommodate overlap on each level. We're getting ready to put the forms in place here. They're a bit challenging to get up this high. They're quite heavy. And I have a clamp on the one side that you can see there that we kind of set the one side on that clamp, let it rest on that, and then get it level and then get a few screws in. It wasn't too bad. We, we managed, but it's pretty heavy and we, it needed to be level. So it took a little bit of doing to get it all all in the right position. Here we're on the other side. April's helping me get it level and hold it in place and just screwing it in and getting ready to go here. I'm prepping the all thread pieces for this wall here. So each time I do this, I have to cut a couple pieces of all thread. And then when you cut them, they always leave a bird edge. And so I have to file them down so that the nut will go on. And then the next thing is just to slide them through both sides. Sometimes that's a little tricky, but if I can access them from the top there and help them through, that makes it easy. And then I just put a washer on and then a couple nuts on each side to keep it from moving. And then have April back me up on one side so I can tighten it down on the other and we're ready to go. Here's my concrete setup here. You can see I have a wheelbarrow of sand at hand. I have a bag of concrete over to the side and then a bucket of rocks ready. And so I just kind of mix all that together. Let it go for just a little while. Get good and blended. I have a a system where I, I add them in the proper sequence and something I've gotten used to. Anyway, that's done and I'm lugging a very heavy bucket inside, swing it up onto that platform and then lift it up to chest height. The video makes it look really easy. It was actually very strenuous. It's really heavy. Uh, like I say, sometimes I'll get a bucket a little bit too full, fill it just a few inches from the top and it's really all I can do to lift it when I get it that full. But so anyway, it was quite doable, but, but pretty heavy. This last pour is just slightly shorter than the other two pours we've did, so I'm hoping I can get by with about eight batches on this one. Well, this really hasn't been so bad. I'm almost done already. It didn't take that many batches since it was a smaller section, so that's good. So I'm almost finished here. I'm getting ready to pour this one in. I'm getting close to the top. I may have to do the next batch, kind of a half batch. I'm trying to do it pretty dry here so I get a, a nice texture at the top and then I can seal that board up to it real nice. And so I'm kind of working it across. Also tapping in some rebar here, and I've actually got the board in place now. So I got it filled up well enough that I could put that board across and have it touching the concrete and settled into the concrete. Then I'm tapping the rebar through the hole that I pre-drilled in the boards down into the wall, settling all that together real nice. Well, we're all finished up pouring for the day. Really excited to see what this looks like tomorrow when we take the forms off our first completed wall. Here I could access the little electric box 
from the previous pour and see what that looked like. It all looked good in there. And decided to finish up the day by doing some, some small tasks, getting a head start on the next wall that we're doing. So where I'm working at now is going to be where the next poured wall is. This is the wall on the guest side of the house. It's only a three and a half inch wide wall so a regular two by four type wall here so it'll be thinner which will make it go faster there is a couple boards that i need to put on the bottom before the forms and to take up a little space there just to due to the way that some conduit came into that wall and you can see there i've got the electric all done and ready to go for that pour tomorrow we decided to go ahead and finish up the day by doing a little bit of drywall and we'll be showing you more about that in our next video it's finally time to remove the panel and see the finished wall. Man, we love the look of this. It really looks nice. You can see the separation between each layer, but we really like the look of it. It kind of has a stacked, that cake kind of look, and there's drips coming down the side. It's a really neat look. We moved on immediately to the next wall. Just took these forms off and started scraping them down and oiling them up and putting them on this next wall. Of course, we're starting on the bottom over here, so it's easy to put them in place. Didn't even really have to level them because that board we already put on we just set them down on top of that. So this was a really easy part. You can see we're already screwing it in and, and getting it ready. So we're just like on the other wall, we're screwing it into this stud, which is part of the rough end door frame. Starting to mix the concrete here, and I just want to mention the rock we're using. So we didn't buy any additional rock for this. We ended up using mostly the big rock that we used in our leach field we had way too much of it and so we ended up spreading it over the ground as kind of a dry parking area but we didn't like it so much because it's such big rock and so we decided to use it in the concrete so it's really large rock mixed in with some of the smaller gravel that we were able to scrape up and reuse well i'm pouring it in here this is filling up a lot faster than the other side this two by four wall is a lot more narrow than the other wall three and a half inches as compared to five to five and a half inches so it's going a lot faster which is nice you can see here April's working on hammering it in and making it settle. She does this between every pour and it really helps to, to get a nice consistent finish and for the concrete to conform to the wall. This is a neat shot. So she poured it in and then you can see the effects of her tapping on it. It just kind of sinks and settles really and makes a nice smooth surface, but it really settles a lot when she taps on the walls. You can really see it sinking and that you can even see air bubbles coming out. So we've got it up to about the height we want, and we're putting in the rebar to tie it into the next level. Well, it's the next day and we're ready to do this again. So we're ready to take these forms off, see how this pour turned out. It looks great, it's still working fine. The forms are getting a little bit warped now, and so we'll see how that goes as we go on further. But we've been keeping up a steady pace, doing one pour per day. So we pour it, and then we let it sit overnight, then we come out move the, the forms and do it again. So this is day number five. We're almost there. We just hope, hopefully we'll be finished up tomorrow, but we've got this one moved up and we're ready to start pouring. We're mixing outside because of the huge mess that it makes, but here you can see the, how far I had to go with this heavy can of concrete. Not complaining, but it was a pretty good walk on inside, kind of through the house to this other side, then throw it up here. My back is starting to get tired and on day five of doing this i'm kind of worried about whether or not it's going to feel good enough to do it again tomorrow we'll just have to wait and see what i feel like tomorrow but so far the back is holding out and it's all going well i, I actually am enjoying the process it's just that my body's starting to complain a little bit but um, anyway i'm pouring this this batch in this wall is going a lot nicer this feels like a vacation it's such a small wall uh, compared to the thickness of the other this, these fill up really fast you can see a little bit of the conduit that, would, that runs along that one side that we have our electrical in. And this, this wall will be done in no time. And back outside to scrape up some more gravel. We actually have to scrape up the gravel for each time we make a batch. It takes one five gallon bucket full of gravel to make a batch. And so here I am raking it up. We're trying to get about a half a bucket of the smaller gravel, which is kind of spread out all around the front of the house because that's where that original pile was dumped and we're just kind of scraping it off the ground. And then we get some of the big rock out of the driveway and combine that. Uh, but that worked out great. You can see it's the next day. We've taken the frame off. That second pour is looking great and we're getting ready for the third pour.
You can see here the effects of some of the warping on the frame. It allowed some of the concrete to leak through. And so we're just scraping off that excess. I think it still looks great and still like the look. You can kind of scrape off the excess pretty easily, but those frames are getting pretty warped, mostly around the center. Wherever those bolts come through, that's they're taking a lot of the strain. And so the wood is starting to warp and bow out around where those bolts attach in the middle. And so we're getting a lot of warpage there. This is the third pour, and so it sits down a little bit, and it's pretty warped there. We had some gaps that are gonna be fairly significant when we make this last pour. I'm getting going here, and we'll see how this works. Hopefully we don't have too much leaking through the cracks in the form this time. So a little bit more on the thermal mass concept. So here in the desert, we have cool air at night in the summertime. And so it's easy for us to bring cool air in at night. And if we have thermal mass in the house, that thermal mass cools down in response to that cool air that we have freely available at night. And so it's a heat sink. And then in the next day, when it's hot outside, that cool concrete or that cool thermal mass is absorbing the heat out of the air and so that's how it equalizes temperature in the summertime in the winter it does just the opposite we have extra heat we will have extra heat during the day from all that sun that's coming in the windows on the south side of the house that extra heat will be absorbed by all this thermal mass and it'll store it because it can't go anywhere it's thermally isolated it stays in the house and then at night it'll release that heat and make the nights not so cold and so that's how thermal mass helps to regulate temperature in a home well, we're done pouring and I'm putting the top plate on. It's the next day we've removed the forms and you can see we did have some spillover. We're actually scraping off some of the excess that filled out and dripped down the sides. We're able to scrape that off though and we really like the look. It's a little more kind of rough and rustic than the other side was, but it still looks nice. This was definitely as much as we could have got out of those forms. We used them six times and they were definitely at the end of their life getting almost too warped to use, but it worked and we're, we like how it turned out. Here I am chipping out around the electrical boxes. There's two on this wall, one for the living room area around the desk and then one for the bedroom. It worked out really well just to put duct tape over the box and pour over it. Just had to chip out a thin layer of concrete and peel that off. Actually worked out really good. I'm moving back to the master bedroom side and working on framing in that portion above the wall. We decided not to try to pour all the way up to the ceiling, mostly just because it would have been really difficult to try to pour all the way up to the top. You know, there's just no way to pour it in to get the bucket up and pour it down in. So we decided to end it at what felt like a nice height to us and just frame in the rest on top, which we thought would actually look nice as well to have a little bit of framed in section over the top. One of the main things that sparked the idea for these walls for us, too, was the fact that we're going to have our rocket mass stove here. So right where I'm standing and working is where we plan to put our rocket mass stove. And this is right on the other side of the master bedroom. So the stove right up next to this big, thick concrete wall that will absorb all the heat from the rocket mass stove and then release that gently throughout the night right into the master bedroom during the winter just sounded like a really great idea. And so that's actually one of the things that sparked this idea to begin with. And then we decided to do it on both sides to make it symmetrical and everything. Anyway, we're really pleased with how this turned out. Looking at these walls, we love the look. We think it's really going to go well with the home and really be a feature of the home and of the living room area. So pleased at how it turned out. Thanks for watching. Please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to join us again next time. Bye.